I think that in that picture I was a bit heavier and now with my new duties I have lost some weight. Costa, if you please play that picture again. This is what brought agribusiness to Thessaly. Mr. Skrekas was the deputy minister of the Ministry of Agriculture, and my friend Vasilis Gyakos was also there. And uh, when we have organized this conference at uh, Ceres, we have started discussing how we are going to have this conference in Trikala, in Thessaly. And this year, dear minister, we are here. You have another portfolio, uh, another ministry. Now, apart from energy, you uh, have also to work on the environment. And before asking you any questions, I would like to ask you, how do you feel now uh, having the responsibility of such a difficult ministry, which, okay, between us is the ministry based on the recovery fund that will bring to Greece a large amount of money in funding. I'm talking about European funding. First of all, you will allow me to welcome uh, Trikala, this beautiful city. And two years ago, Mr. Balakakis and I, we have started discussing the possibility of having angry business in Trikala and in Thessaly. And I am uh, very happy that this happened. And I had the chance to meet with uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, friends. Let's start with Costas Baginetas. And we have spent thousands of hours in, when we try to uh, plan the new common agricultural policy with Mr. Tsifukas from the University of Athens, Mr. Lanos, the former Secretary General, Mr. Kasimis, who has also done a great job in a previous government. Mr. Kasimis was uh, an exception uh, at the previous government. And I have learned tons of things because it is different to know uh, the agribusiness uh, uh, from the experience. I have a lot of friends and relatives here who are farmers and breeders, but it is also very different to go to the other way and try to plan policies that will help those people grow and uh, move forward. And it is this is not easy. And the question by the last breeder, which is a very uh, uh, good example, it shows how difficult it is to have a plan that will give perspective to the uh, agricultural sector in Greece. Therefore, I have only good memories and extremely good experiences and a lot of knowledge that I have collected from the Ministry of Agricultural Development. So I think that in my current position, I can also help the primary sector of Greece to grow and become more competitive and more resilient to this new environment, to the climate change, and to the international competition, which uh, becomes harder uh, with everyday passing. So from this new position that you have as a Minister of Energy and Environment, uh, you might have listened that uh, we have spoken a lot about uh, renewable energy sources and water. And I want to stress two things that we have listened today. First of all, the fact that we cannot 
plant every productive surface with photovoltaic plants. And Spiros Herdis from Hellenic Petroleum said that they are uh, having a great investment plan in renewable energy sources and also in photovoltaic. And at the same time, we have the uh, decarbonization and delignization that will happen in Ptolemaeva and in Megalopolis. And we're talking about 250,000 stremas that um, uh, we will gain with the lignite phase out. Some of that will be productive lands and some of them will be alternative energy fields. So what about the next day of renewable energy sources and what about the so-called photovoltaics? Let me start by saying that we will not uh, fill every productive land with photovoltaics. Uh, we passed a law which says that there is a limit, 1% of the total of uh, the agricultural land of high productivity can be used in order to uh, install photovoltaics. Therefore, uh, we have limited this percentage to 1%, so that danger is not realistic. We cannot uh, lose a productive agricultural land in order to install uh, photovoltaic or other renewable energy sources stations. On the other hand, what we should discuss is how we are going to reduce the cost in agriculture and livestock breeding and how we are going to utilize renewable energy sources to the benefit of farmers and breeders. First of all, during my time as a deputy minister, we have planned the so-called 2575. We give the opportunity to a farmer or to a livestock breeder to install a photovoltaic four times more than its consumption, to its energy consumption, and to use what they need and the three-fourths of that uh, energy to so sell them to the system, which will allow them to have more income. Which is the problem in this proposal? Is the fact that our networks are uh, not enough. So we uh, plan to give only to farmers the opportunity, even where the networks are not enough, an extra energy space just to use, just for the use of uh, farmers, of people who their main profession is farming. The second measure, which has not been announced yet, this is a new measure, this is a piece of news, yes, for people who have their main profession as farmers, we have already announced that we will give the opportunity until the end of 2022 to build a small photovoltaic until 100 kilowatts and we will give them a tariff which is higher than the one uh, existing now. Now, those photovoltaics have 65 uh, and this will be reduced in 62 watts with the new year. For those who are farmers, until photovoltaics on 100 kilowatts, the tariff will be bigger than 80 euros per uh, megawatt hour. So this is a good initiative and they will be able, the farmers will be able to utilize this extra space allocated to farmers. Therefore, we will be able to help them use technology and use renewable energy sources to decrease their energy cost and at the end of the day to uh, make it neutral but also to have an extra income because right now energy prices uh, are uh, double uh, compared to what they have been uh, last year. Okay. 
the state right now cannot impose producers the price that we want, since we work on a free market, we operate on a free market. Electric, electric energy is regulated by the international uh, markets and by the energy stock market. Therefore, we will have to find solutions that will make farmers competitive. And this is what we will do by utilizing renewable energy sources. And of course, collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture. We uh, have resources, we have money, a lot of billion euros for the new programming period. And a piece of that money, a part of that money, should be used in order to uh, give uh, subsidies for the installation of renewable energy sources uh, by people who are, are farmers. And to make this investment uh, more realistic and more efficient. Because some farmers do not have the economic means to uh, do such a thing, to do such an investment. When we talk about financing tools, there is the feeling that, yes, we do have money. And this is related to the Recovery Fund and the European Investment Fund. And right now, as we speak, all the banks are oriented towards the direction for the new system, etc. So. When we talk about what you mentioned before, we talk about substantial investment that could potentially be injected in order for those farmers to benefit in terms of energy costs and be able to sell more. So, at the end of the day, they will become business farmers. And I believe that banks say that, okay, if you do this or the other, then tomorrow they will be able to provide farmers with the money they need in order to proceed to such investments. Well, I believe there are more competent people than myself to talk about that. We have the various advisors, the Secretary General, and you know who else is here from the Ministry of Rural Development. But I would like to say that Mr. Kasimis, our Secretary General, had started with the first financing tool and he used some money from the European Rural Fund in order for the banks to benefit from this tool. And this was something that allowed the farmers uh, that benefited from those programs to improve and grow. And I am sure that uh, this effort of Mr. Kasim, uh, Kasims and Mr. Beginetas will continue over the next programming period. And it is sure that we need to boost that and further increase it. Because I'm going to share an example from my ministry. Okay, we do have money. And I have also said that, okay, money is there, but it's not enough. And um, somehow money is far less than compared to what we actually need. For example, by 2030, we need to upgrade 6,000 houses through the ex economo program in order to achieve the national goal of reducing the carbon dioxide emissions by 55%. So, in order to do that, we need 12 billion euro. The money we have received from the recovery funds is just 1.5 billion euro. Okay. So we have money in our fund, but we're still lacking another 10.5 billion euro. So money is there, but we need to capitalize on that. Money is never enough. And uh, this is where the banking system steps in. They need to work harder and uh, we need to create funding tools in order to run those things. And uh, we see that a subsidy is enough in order for investment to happen. But first of all, we need to assess whether this investment is sustainable or viable or profitable. This investment should not happen just because it is accompanied by a subsidy. It's just that it is more attractive and it has a better ROI. But any investment should be viable. So... 
this does not mean that we need to have subs in the future. Okay, we need subsidies, but those subsidies will not be enough. So we need to capitalize on smart financing tools. And um, when it comes to your perspective at the ministry, today, Thessaly, during the session that focused on the water management, all professors laid special emphasis on the irrigation of the land, the over irrigation, the various proposals that have been submitted in order to avoid desertification and provide better support to the production. Natural resources should support production. We know that there are things that fall under the purview of the Ministry of Infrastructure. I'm talking about the networks, but when we talk about the environment, given that farmers need water in order to exist, in order to work, I would like to ask you, in light of the various announcements made by the government to, uh, about the need to save natural resources, do you have any comments to make on that? Okay, that's my favorite topic when I was at the Rural Development uh, Ministry. Well, back then, when I first took office in June 2019, over the first two weeks, I perceived, okay, actually I, w I was aware of the water problem, but I came across a number. 80% of water used in Greece is dedicated to agriculture. I found it very hard to believe that all the water we consume in Athens, the Saloniki, Strikala, all the cities, if we sum up this water, this is just 20% of the overall water consumption in agriculture. And I also came across some other data that were very alarming. For example, 65% of this water is pumped from the underground water reserve. And I try to make a direct comparison to what other southern European countries do. Things were even more alarming. Spain, for example, dedicates 80% of uh, the 80 percent of the water they use is superficial water. We use the underground water, meaning that we exhaust the water reserve. The farmers have to pump water from a deeper aquifer, and this means that the reserve is exhausted. The farmer consumes more energy. This means that our farmers lose on both sides. So what did we do? Because that was a very useful observation. And over the past decade, the, the diagnosis was even poorer. So this um, underground superficial water use proportion was 50-50. And over 10 years, we had 65 underground water use, over 35% superficial water use. So when we took office, Mr. Kasimis, the exception I mentioned before, had promised works, agricultural works, worth 180 million euro. A comment over the microphone. You say 450 million euro. Okay, we had a 250 million euro program. Anyway, today, within two years, our, our government has planned and promoted irrigation and other programs through public and private partnerships through the use of uh, various programs from the recovery funds that amount to 1.5 billion euro to begin with. So you do realize that we have four times more budget for works for something that normally should have been done 30 years ago. It has not been implemented. If you look into the networks at Tavropos, I visited uh, my dear friend from Karditsa over there. This is the first PPP project that we designed. 110,000 streamers, if memory serves right, of irrigation network. 
that was superficial and if I remember correctly it consumes 6.5 cubic 6.5 million cubic meters 60 million cubic meter water and so we make it underground and uh, this consumes 50% less because we move away from the obsolete uh, superficial uh, network with open channels, extreme waste uh, and we move towards a smart uh, pressurized uh, underground system that uh, will consume 50% less water and the most important uh, today the calls in order to pump water and irrigate your land at Tavropos because it has a water reserves it is the first web that we have available there in Tavropos they have been using vast amounts of energy and this energy was generated by diesel in order to irrigate their land and this might cost 70 up to 100 euro per strema for arable crops so you do realize that in the case of the pressurized system this cost might drop to 5 or 10 euro per strema so you understand that those farmers who today struggle to make ends meet will become competitive tomorrow. They will have lower cost of production and they will have water for many, many decades more. A last question. A last question. A dear friend said that you might be the man to answer that. How do you share responsibilities between the two ministries in terms of the non-activation of the environmental measures for the Natura regions? This goes back to 2007 and on. I will tell you what we are doing from 2019 and on. The Ministry of Environment and Energy collaborates with the Ministry of uh, Agricultural Development. First of all, is what I've told you earlier, that we should plan a primary sector which will be resilient to the um, effects of climate change. And we should all agree that there is climate change. Climate change exists. Is there climate change? And I will mention some data which shows that something has changed. I remember that 400 to 400 uh, million euros have been the subsidies for um, 2020. This is four and five money more than what we used to give uh, 10 years uh, before. And if we don't, if we will not do nothing, then nothing will happen. So first thing first, we have to manage the risk that comes from climate change in uh, agricultural production. The second is how we will build a primary sector who will be competitive which means that we have to reduce the production cost and that means we will safeguard as much as we can the energy cost and the uh, resources cost and at the same time we will change the mindset and train farmers in order to um, use uh, fertilizers, resources, pesticides in a better way uh, and not uh, uh, without giving it a second thought. Therefore, we should teach farmers, train farmers, how they will be able to do their job better and how they will uh, sell the products better 
and one should have the critical mass. And this is where collaborative groups uh, play a role, because if they have a better critical mass, we will have uh, better prices, uh, both selling and buying. Uh, and we plan all those things, collaboration with the Ministry of Agricultural Development. When I talk you speaking, it is uh, I feel that you are still in the Ministry of Agricultural Development. But you haven't asked me for the Ministry of Environment. It, and this is the question. What about energy? What about energy prices? What will happen with the industry? What will happen with the households? What about the cost of production? What about the transports? And this will be my last question. I will tell you what we did. In order to understand what is happening, we should understand what is going on. Electricity, electric energy and natural gas, which we use to produce electricity, with the existing model, the price is measured with the last unit. When the energy plants declare what they will produce tomorrow, so they declare today what quantity they will produce tomorrow and which is the price, and all are included from the cheaper to the most expensive, and the last unit is the one that uh, sets the price. And since the last units are the natural gas units in Europe, and the natural gas costs a lot, which means that this is why we have a very expensive energy right now. And what does 100 uh, euros for uh, mean? means that we need two thermal megawatt hours in order to produce one electrical megawatt hours, which means that we need 200 euros in order to produce one electric megawatt hour only as a cost of fuel. Uh, the cost of produce, production is not included. This is why the energy prices are so expensive in Greece. When we used to buy it 110 megawatt hours, which means that today uh, the price is two and a half times more expensive than the one compared uh, to the beginning of the year and the, the price of the natural gas. So what we should we do? The truth is that we cannot do a lot of things. We can just save energy. To, the industry should make investments in order to consume less energy, and the same goes to farmers. And this is why they should understand ways to reduce the energy. Let's say that they have done the optimal, but they still need to produce, they still need to consume energy. And this is where we come and as a Ministry of Energy, we use renewable energy sources in order to product, to support, I apologize, the productive base of our country. Last uh, week, we had a decision that increased from one megawatt to three megawatts for all productive units. Food industry, they can't build a photovoltaic up to three megawatts and to uh, use that energy. One month ago, we passed a law that we give the opportunity to a productive unit, for example, to a cheese uh, plant, to build, to install a photovoltaic as big as they want and to consume at the time of production that energy at the same time, which means that an industry that has a morning, let's say, consumption of five or ten uh, gig gigawatt hours to install a photovoltaic and during the morning uh, 
to consume the energy produced by that photovoltaic 100%. That will decrease the price of uh, electric energy. And, but since this is not always easy for everyone, are the so-called green bilateral contract. What is this? It is a contract between a group of farmers, a group of breeders and an industry or a group of, let's say, enterprises which, with a producer of green energy immediately without passing through the market with a 10-year contract and that allows them to have a very low cost of energy. And uh, we know that prior to the increase we had a, a relatively low price of the electricity produced, but now they have the opportunity to buy energy directly from the producer on the basis of this bilateral contract. And this is a scheme that we have submitted to the European Commission for competition, and once it is approved, it will be available to the Greek market. So I believe that these are the ways in order to be able to ensure low energy costs, high visibility, and green energy. And let us not forget that in 2030, we need 70% of the energy that we consume to originate from RES. And now I would like to ask a last question. Yes, on the one hand, we have RESs that are not an extra burden for the environment, but they're not stable in terms of uh, the production volume that they can offer compared to what they get from lignite. At the same time, something that we take for granted is the following. Egypt, Cyprus and other countries move on to mining because they want to be self-sufficient in terms of energy. Well, what we have heard over the past two or three years, Greece, and it's true that Hellenic Petroleum was among the companies that participated in those schemes. So they had found the exact points for drilling in order for Greece to be self-sufficient energy-wise. Will this move forward? Well, I'm afraid that this is up to the companies that have received those concessions, Southern Crete and Western of Attica. But I must tell you, the sunshine is something that we have in abundance. But generating power from sun, well, this is something that gives us self-sufficiency and also gives us a national sovereignty. We own the wind, we own the sun. The same applies to water. When the dam of Mesohora is completed, which, by the way, is something that we try to run so that we can have the approval before Christmas, in you know, something that will pave the way for the completion and delivery to the people at Tricala and all the Greeks, this operation, this function, with uh, always considering the remarks submitted by the Council of State, so that uh, this will not receive negative feedback again from the Council of State. So once we capitalize on sun, wind, uh, we will no longer need fossil fuel. That's our goal. From that point on, on, we need to insist on the fact that energy needs to be stored. And that's why we're moving on. A very ambitious program for the installation of batteries by 2030, and we did indicate 250 million euro for pumping and storage of energy. I'm talking about two reservoirs. We have one lo being located at an inferior level compared to the first one. So this means that when you need energy, you draw this energy from the one reservoir, and when you need additional energy, you drop the water from the first reservoir to the second reservoir, and this is how you obtain energy. And uh, we know that now we also have another ambitious program. <laughs> and 
today we have a 50% subsidy that allows farmers to buy photovoltaic panels, to buy those batteries, and they receive a 50% subsidy. I don't know how many panels they have purchased, because right now they also go to coastal areas, they use structures, engines, in order to pump water, and this has a cost of more than 100 euro per stream, when they can buy a 50% subsidized battery, and before I left the ministry, this opportunity was real, so they can buy a trailer, they can charge the trailer at night, and we provide a 50% subsidy on this motor powered pump, so they can also replace the irrigation pump, and uh, next day they can go to their plant, to their land, and they can use this electricity at a very lower cost, substantially lower cost. Well, those are things that can be implemented in practice. This is what we need to tell farmers. If things are difficult, and if this program is difficult, then the next program, Mr. Secretary General, need to be designed in a way that will make them easier. And we talk about the purchase of equipment, so this is something that can be done very quickly. Well, I hope we manage to live up to the expectations uh, of uh, all the ladies and gentlemen who attended us. Thank you so much for being here with us. I would also like to thank all the people who joined us since this morning. We, we are now at the end of this 12-hour long flow. We're looking forward to seeing you upstairs at the bar. It's a pleasure and an honor that you have graced the event with your presence. So, let's go upstairs to enjoy a glass of wine. Thank you. <laughs>